What's up guys, it's Justin here, and today I've got a video of the Hover Camera Passport Drone, which retails at under $500 and shoots 4K video. And we're gonna try to fly this in my office because it's the most harmless looking drone I've ever had. And that may or may not be a good idea, but we're going to find out later. Also go ahead and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and drop a comment down below and leave a like on this video and when we hit 1500, I'll pick one of you in the comment section to win a toy drone to fly around as well. So for those who might have followed my channel for a while, you might know that I have a history with drones, not exactly a good one, but it's never the drone's fault, it's all my fault for not reading the instructions, not putting it together properly, or just not knowing how to fly it in general, so I'm kind of dumb, there's really no better way to put it, but let's start out with my first drone. So the first one I had was late 2015, I believe, and that was the DJI Phantom 3 Professional, which shot 4K video. And the first day I got it, I lifted it up from my driveway, it flew away, and it did not come back. And it ended up landing on the side of a mountain, and I found it the day after, but it was kind of a sad moment. The first time you get a play with your new toy, and it just disappears. The next day I brought it back, I thought it'd be a good idea to try to fly it around my brand new office, and let's just say that didn't go well either. I had no idea how to land it and it hit a wall that was just painted the week before and put a nice big scrape in it which is still there because I haven't gotten around to fixing it a year and a half later. The second drone I got after I sold the Phantom 3 was the DJI Inspire 1 and this is a big drone. It's relatively heavy, it's pretty dangerous if you don't know how to fly it. And the first few flights went smoothly, I got some great footage. but there was one time it was a sunset and I decided to take it for a quick flight and I actually didn't screw the props on properly and when it was around 10 meters in the air, it just all of a sudden free fell upside down and fell into like five different pieces. Oh hell no! DJI ended up fixing that, I sold that and got the Phantom 4 because it had object avoidance and let's just say nothing's happened to that one yet but the main reason is because I haven't really flown it at all. But this is a hover camera drone and you might have seen some early videos of the prototype units a few months back but it just became available for sale at Apple Store and you guys seem to want to see a video on it so I went ahead and picked it up and hopefully I don't damage this one or anything around it. The built-in camera can shoot 4K at 30 frames per second and has a 13 megapixel camera. It's an f2.0 aperture with a 78 degree field of view and the main reason why I'm going to try to fly this in the office is because it has a carbon fiber reinforced cage that is surrounded it, meaning you won't directly hit any items with the props if you happen to run into them. And it weighs in at just 242 grams, which is insane considering how much packed into it. It is even smaller than the Mavic, but I wouldn't say that it is in the same class. It has a max speed of 17 miles per hour and comes with two batteries, which last about 10 minutes each, which is kind of disappointing. You can control this directly from your iPhone or Android phone using Wi-Fi through a 2.4 or 5 gigahertz band, and you have a range of about 65 feet maximum. So let's just start flying this thing in my office and hopefully I don't damage anything. And it's also a very sunny day outside, so I'm probably going to take this out and show you some test footage as well, but hopefully this doesn't fly away or crash into anything, damage anything like my previous ones did.
The drone has 32 gigs of built-in non-expandable storage and you use a USB-B cable to sync the footage over to your computer. Within the app, there are quite a few different modes including manual control, group photo, bird's eye, running, cycling, orbit, and also 360 degree spin for a panoramic image. The funny thing is the app has a few videos that it requires you to watch before being able to fly the drone itself and unlock the different modes, which is probably a good idea if you're someone like me or Casey Neistat who just wants to take this out, fly it, and most likely get into an accident the first day. To start flying this thing, it was actually very easy. All I had to do was connect to the Wi-Fi after turning on the drone, and just by holding it in midair and pressing the power button will enable it to just hover where it is while you get into the app and start controlling where you want it to fly. The camera has the ability to track faces and objects, kind of like what you've seen on the newest DJI drones. So I have to say, this drone is actually very easy to fly. There isn't many settings to mess with when it comes to flying it. You have the up, down, and you have the forward, backwards, side to side flying. And to rotate the thing, you just have to drag along the screen to the direction you want it to. You can also flip the orientation that you want it to work in. And landing it is very simple. Just go up to the drone itself and press the power button and it will immediately shut off the propellers. And you don't have to worry about getting cut by the propellers because you are protected by the carbon fiber cage, which is probably one of the most important things about this drone for someone like me. The flight from what I noticed was very easy to control, but I wouldn't recommend taking it in high winds because this is a small drone and it gets overpowered quite easily. Just from looking at it though, I really can't take this thing seriously. It almost looks like a toy as opposed to an actual drone because of just how small it is and the way it looks. It's great that it's easy to fold up. And I think if you're looking to get a family drone, if you have pets around or small children, or if you wanna let your kid fly this, this is probably the best option out there because you're very unlikely to damage anything or anyone, but at the same time, you still wanna be cautious. So I think this drone, as I would describe it, is the most idiot proof of what I've had so far. The footage looks pretty decent in my opinion, and you can be the judge of what you think of it based on the footage I've shown. And I think this is just much more pick up and play compared to DJI drones, which are amazing and probably the best in the market when it comes to being feature packed. But in this situation, you have all of the basic things and nothing much else to really intimidate you. The only major complaint I have is a 10 minute battery life, which really isn't much when you actually get to setting it up and getting your footage. So you're gonna wanna bring two at all times, but I understand that this is a small drone and maybe 1360 milliamp hours was as large as they could have gone. I'm not an engineer myself, so I'm just gonna leave that statement at that. At about $500, it isn't cheap by any means, but it is cheaper relative to the other alternatives that you could get that shoot 4K. And I think this is actually a pretty good value for what it is. Otherwise, if you guys enjoyed this video, go ahead and leave a like and make sure you're subscribed to the channel if you would like to win a mini toy drone that I'll be sending out to one of you guys. But thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.